Okay, I've been doing a bit of thinning here and of course uh, regular saw maintenance is very important. So let's just zoom down. So it's a bright and cold morning and we've we've had a lot of grey misty days and at least now we've got the sun out and the solar's working well 30 degrees like that yeah so I'm just gonna go along and uh, do all of these cutters just to make sure and of course we just need to check with the the depth gauges are fine now on that last video that I did and I'll put a link to it in the description and at the end of this video there was something about the depth gauge setting tool that not many people picked up on anyway now this video is about chain tension okay so I've been I've been brushing and uh, snedding out some trees and of course that is quite tough on a chain so this chain is slack now when you have a slack chain I wonder if I can do it here what tends to happen is it's the cutter that's doing the work ah there you can see so as the pressure is put on the cutter yeah, the depth gauge or the cutter itself rocks like this yeah hopefully you can see that and it can create vibration because obviously if the cutter goes back then the depth gauge goes up and therefore the depth gauge is too high and so therefore the cutter stops cutting and there's no pressure on it and then that goes down again and it goes up and down and on very bad examples where the chain is almost hanging off the bottom of the bar this one isn't but it's a bit slack look but I've seen it where they hang down like that then this rocking motion gets even worse and so what tends to happen so let's just move forward chain brakes on so what happens is the heel of the cutter wears because there's more pressure on there yeah, so the heel of the cutter presses into the rails of the bar and I've seen it in the past where the this um, this heel skews fingers that heel there is worn right down to the rivet yeah and of course it digs into the bar something cruel so so therefore chain tension is very important so I'm just going to loosen off this these side case nuts okay not loosen them too much but you know and then I'm just going to tighten this up now what's enough that's enough so it just goes to about that much and of course the longer the bar the more that will lift up so you have to use um you have to be aware of that because with a long bar you can get to the point where the chain is too tight now this is just a 13 inch bar I'll just tighten those side case knots so now when you push on that it won't move okay that's basically it I'm gonna go around and 
maintain this chain again some people would go oh it's sharp enough but no if this has done a tank full and been cutting a lot of ash or any timber really but ash is particularly hard then um, then it will it will have taken the edge off slightly maybe imperceptibly so you go round spend five minutes just sharpen it up again one or two wipes and you're back to performance and of course the best way to reduce your environmental impact when you're using a chainsaw apart from switching it off and not felling habitat trees is to keep it sharp keep it sharp you use a lot less fuel a lot less oil and you create a lot less noise anyway hopefully you have found that interesting perhaps I'll just go and find a bar and show you what what the problems are of course if you've got uneven cutters like one side is bigger than the other and a slack chain then it will increase the wear on the rails of the bar more on one side than the other and of course then the the chain will tip over and, uh, and then you'll start cutting in a curve and, and wasting more time and energy and whatnot and I've just noticed here that the tip of that cutter there is blunt I can just see a slight reflection of light I wonder if we can get it in the camera we probably can't there you can just see on that corner a little re of reflection and a little chip so you think oh the change is sharp no it's not perfect right right so this is an example a particularly bad example or a good example whichever one to a good example of an abused bar so it's probably been run blunt and uh, slack and can you see how these here the rails are worn and they're tapered in like that so it's not been maintained and there's a chip there and of course you know, bar maintenance I think I'll probably have to do another video about that but just there I'm off camera now just here there's a fine example of what happens if you leave the burrs on I'm just going to turn the camera around because what happens is the burrs get big and then they snap off and when they snap off they take half the rail with them and then when they half the rails missing there's less support for the chain and so therefore the top of the, the rail wears more and I can feel wear there so let's just move the camera around so we've moved round let me just find out where that you can't quite see it as well but that is where the rails are the top of that rail there is tapered in like that and it's spread that spread compared to down the end there so that won't support the chain properly and there half the rail is missing and that's lower just there and we come down there's an even bigger chip there and there again and we can't really see this on the camera but the, uh, you can there look can you see there's a stand-up burr there and all that is worn down anyway this bar is scrap which is why I keep it for when I'm uh, assessing 
you can it's it's like an easy way for candidates to answer some of the questions if they've got a bar in front of them uh, which has got plainly a lot of obvious problems and there's even there look can you see there this is near the nose see on the left hand side there how that bar is worn one one more one one side more than the other anyway hope you found this sort of chat conversation interesting go down there and give us some comments please and uh, I will catch up with you soon cheers for now